it does feel a bit like on a Tuesday you've no idea what the Chamber's been up to because it's one of these busy days. Um, but, you know, I think like everybody, we've been assessing what we do and how we do it. Um, we're in week 570 of lockdown, I think. It's just been the most bizarre time, hasn't it? But we're definitely in a in a completely different phase, I think. You know, it's, it's funny. I think we'll look back on this and the first few weeks um, was just utterly frantic and um, really, really, really difficult. Um, and I think that was all because businesses were struggling and they were needing access to funding and worried about what was happening and how they would come out of it. Um, and and we've heard from all sorts of different businesses about how their business has flown and gone through the roof. It's been so busy, they've not been able to cope. And then we've heard the opposite, where people are just have got no income, no business, no nothing whatsoever, and then there's everybody else in between. And the Chamber's been doing a lot of work to, to look at what we do, how we do it, and what our customers, our members are really looking for. And we've been doing a lot of talking to businesses. So this week is really no different in that, you know, we're um, we're running our webinar. So for those of you, again, that haven't heard me tell this story, we're doing four webinars a week. So we start on a Tuesday um, with a member networking session and we've taken our DAC 123 programme from a face-to-face -face event and, and taken that into Zoom. And actually it works really well. So, you know, we hear from a member who's almost the host of that session and then we split off into discussion groups and we talk about topical things. So, Today um, we heard from Ecoanalytes, but then so then you know their question to the group was all about how people are kind of going to go back into their physical spaces and how they're going to keep those safe and what procedures are being put into place for all of that. So lots of really interesting, useful stuff comes out of those kind of discussions. And um, Tuesday nights, which is where you are tonight, is our a guide to series. So you know we've looked at a guide to cash flow. We've looked at um, all sorts of different things, a guide to e-commerce, a guide to engaging online content. Yeah, all sorts of, um, of of members coming on and showcasing what it is they do. Um, Wednesday sees us do webcasts, uh, web, webinars that are all about supporting people. So, you know, you can find all of this on our YouTube channel, but you, you get things, you can see things like, you know, we started off with mental health and well-being um, and we've gone through motivating people and how to remote work and remote manage your teams um, and and Thursday sees us look at business support so what does like, your actual organization need um, you know whether it's about strategy and planning whether it's about um, what we'll be doing this week which is about workforce planning and you know we're going to hear about how do you, you know, if you've used a furlough scheme, how do you plan out of that? How do you plan for transition? So lots and lots of businesses are, are going to not come out and, and be right out of the starting block. So how do you transition from not really being open to, you know, maybe continuing to offer an online service blended with what you used to do before um, the middle of March um, and, and managing people through all of that and making sure you're doing it in the right way is, is hugely important. So yeah, yeah, lots going on with the Chamber. Um, we also, uh, for those of you that have come across our Developing Young Workforce group, um, that's about getting young people into local employment. And the, the team is based out of the Chamber offices, usually. Um, and it's an employer-led group. So at the moment, I'm an interim chair of that group because our employer lead has, is caught up in um, lots of coronavirus work at the moment and just not able to dedicate the time she wanted to it. So um, you know, there was a national session today where we were talking to Jamie Hepburn about what the government's plans are. Youth unemployment for the last quarter has risen to 14.1%, which is really scary. Um, and of course, the worry is that there, are, there will be other job losses as well through all the summer and the crisis and young people get further and further away from the jobs they might have been going into because there may be a whole series of other people that are really employable and have walked out, left one job and can walk straight into something else. And the young people that are not quite as employable as those others will, will get left further and further behind. So, yeah, so it's just a bit of a snapshot, I guess, about some of the things that the Chamber's been involved in. Um, and I'm really looking forward to this evening, but um, we were just having a, a, a wee bit of a laugh. Um, we didn't actually get around to uh, finding out whether um, everybody on our call, all our speakers have all been insights um, driven. But, you know, I think 
um, Kev and I recorded a, 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 a sponsor interview was it a week past anyway um and and Kerr and I were were doing a podcast recording so Kerr and I are both blatantly insight yellow um types and I suspect um Kev is one of those too so there aren't there aren't many of them in our team actually so it's really quite interesting uh, so yeah yeah there's no chance of finishing this on time Sarah will be freaking out <laughs> anyway I'm going to get out of the way um and introduce Kev. So um, Kev, if you want to unmute and you can tell us a little bit about you and what you do, as soon as I can hear you, I will mute. Cool. Can you hear me better now? I've, yes, I've, now uh, that you're I've, unmuted. I've, <laughs> yeah, well, I've borrowed my I've borrowed my son's um, gaming headset because my other one wasn't working properly. So, um, so first of all, thank you for the introduction, Alison. And um, yeah, pleasure to be um, a guest here tonight um, for two reasons. One, I love podcasts. And two, me and one of the co-hosts have got something of a history. So I have known um, Kerr Matheson for 40, yes, 40, 40 years. Um, we were at primary school, secondary school, and I can exclusively reveal that Kerr and I were choir boys together. Um, yes, we were choir boys. We and not just any ordinary choir boys. We were choir boys that went on a tour to America. I, and this isn't a wind up. This is serious. Karen and I had uh, had a, a almost three week journey to Chicago and uh, Illinois. I think age about eleven or twelve. So, so yeah, I've known Kerr for an awful long time, and Kerr's actually helped me an awful lot with my own podcast and with a few audio projects that I've been uh, working on as well. So Kerr definitely is my kind of go-to guy um, for all things uh, audio. Um, as for me, well, I'm Kev, I'm a professional storyteller. And for me, one of my favorite ways to consume stories is through these things, my lugs. Um, I love, listening to podcasts and audiobooks. Uh, for me, there's just, a, it's a really intimate way to, to hear somebody share their story. Uh, and I, I always feel a bit of a deeper connection when you hear the original author, you know, sharing their stories. So I think, you know, there, there are so many opportunities to, you know, to use podcasting um, as a learning tool, as a relaxation tool, and also as a is a bit of a marketing and, and business development tool. You can really um, you can really raise your profile through something like uh, like podcasting. Now, instead of um, using my sponsor time to sell a set of steak knives or um, you know uh, pitch my product, I thought what I'd what I'd do is try and offer something a little bit useful. So, what I want you to think about is your own content preferences okay so we all have a bit of a bias in terms of how we consume media um so for me for example i am funnily enough i'm a writer so i do a lot of reading so given the choice my consumption preference is to read something second it's to listen so for me you know close behind reading something is listening so to a podcast uh, to an audiobook and then third it's it's watching videos okay and that's my preference but here's the challenge i am not everyone and neither are you so so the lesson here is that we have to watch that we don't let our own personal preferences really um stop us from trying new ways of communicating new ways of sharing our content or new ways of sharing our stories um, so, you know, if, if you really want to reach me, then something written or, or, or a, an audio book or a podcast, great. Um, video, you know, maybe not so much. So, you know, you have to think about your ideal audience. You know, you might personally not be a huge fan of uh, podcasting. You might have never listened to a podcast in your life. It's maybe just not your thing. And that's absolutely OK. However, it might be your ideal customer's thing. Um, in a world that's really, really noisy 
I think things like podcasts can really help you stand out from the crowd. So, yeah, I want you to think about different ways of communicating, different ways of sharing your stories. And I'll kind of finish up with three ideas, different kind of content that you could be um, using on your on your podcast. So one, you know, interview interesting people, you know, um, get to know them, get to know their story, not just their business story, um, but their personal stories as well. Second is create a podcast series that teaches an aspect of what you do. So, you know, podcasting shouldn't be about pitching your products. Um, it should be about either entertaining, engaging, connecting or teaching. So what is it you could teach in a podcast series? And then the last one is sharing a mix of your own stories. So that could be your client success stories. That could be stories of your team members or stories of your partners. There are so many ways of, of, of you know, doing that on a, on a podcast and it's never been easier to do. And there's a lot of really smart people who you're going to learn from tonight that are, that are doing a fantastic job at it. So, yeah, I will, I will shut up now. Um, if you haven't met me and you'd love a conversation and you like a virtual coffee, I would, I would love the opportunity to have a virtual coffee with you. Um, so the link will be shared um, kind of later on. It would be, it would be great to, to meet you, uh, hear some of your stories. Um, but for now, I will hand you, hand you over to the very, very capable hands of Kerr and Kesser. Yeah, you didn't build that up very much, did you? <laughs> Thanks, mate. Thanks, Kev. Um, yeah. So, um, so apparently, Kevin's known me since I was minus ten. Um, okay, forty years ago. And in case you you think he's kidding about the whole um, choir thing, I I actually have CDs to prove it. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> However, that's not what we're here to talk about. Um, Podcasting. So Kevin's given us already quite a, a good introduction as to what you might use podcasting for and things. Um, but I want to kind of start with you right at the the, the basics of um, what what is a podcast. If you're not familiar with podcasts, um, or if you're not familiar with um, you know uh, you haven't you know listened to a lot of podcasts and things, then you might not be quite um, understanding exactly what a podcast would be. So the best way I say to think about it is that. A podcast um, is your own radio show, your own broadcast. So that means you can treat it uh, in whatever way you like, whatever message you want to get across. If that's a chance to sort of impart some knowledge to people, if that's a chance to show your expertise at things, um, a chance to dispel some myths about your industry or, or um, what goes on, or to confirm with people some of your beliefs and your ways of working and, and, and things like that. Essentially, it's, it, it's your show, it's your length of time, it's your format, your platform to really become an authority and an expert on, on what you're talking about. And as Kev already said, in my view, what it should not be is just a straight up advert for your business. So a podcast does not become engaging if it's used as... Um, we do this, we do it much better than everybody else, and we're much cheaper. Thank you very much. Um, that, that really is, is not what people want to hear from you um, in a podcast. Um, so uh, let me give you a quick um, screen share of just what I'm going to touch on. Let's do that so you don't have to look at me anymore. Um, so, yes, as I said, think of your podcast as, as your own radio show or your broadcast. Um, and the next thing I'm going to move on to is, is why would you want to do a podcast? Um, and I'm going to ask Kesser in a minute about, about why he started his podcast and things, because you're, you're not going to have to put up with me for the whole night. Um, but but my, my key word for why you would want to do a podcast is engage. And I don't mean like the Captain Picard Star Trek engage um, type thing. I mean, engaging with people um, and getting them to engage with you. So you want to get people to engage with your ideals or you want to engage with your audience um, and let them know what your expertise is and why you're the go-to person for things. Um, you might want to engage in actual discussion and encourage people to contact you on a subject you've been talking about on the podcast. Um, you might have guests on, as, as Kev suggested, one of the things you can do is interview people about either their stories or, or their opinions on things that you want to talk about. And you want to engage that, that discussion on the areas of interest. Um, but 
as with a lot of the the sort of content marketing campaigns that go on, um, it's as you becoming an authority on your subject. So what you really want to do with a podcast is use the opportunity to say, this is what I do. This is how I do it. This is why I do it this way. This is why I believe that this is the right way to do it. If you ever have an interest in what I do, please feel free to get in touch. That's essentially the message that, that you're trying to create is, is to say, here's all the interesting things about um, what I do and how I do it. And, uh, and this is why I'm the person that you should come to if you want to know more. So I think, um, Kessar, it might be a good opportunity for you to jump in and, and give us a bit of story um, on what you did to create your podcast, um, or rather why is, is probably the most important thing right now. Um, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much, Kerr. Um, yeah, so, so the, the reason why I created my podcast was um, the simplest one. I, th I thought it'd be a cool idea to do. You know, I think Joe Rogue has made it quite cool podcasting now. Um, I've been listening to podcasts since about 2012 myself, um, but I just thought it'd be a cool idea to start out. But all the points that you said yourself really is just to kind of um, educate the client. So, you know, my main business is I'm a mortgage advisor, um, but people aren't really interested in mortgages as such. They're more interested in property. Um, so I specialized uh, in helping clients kind of buy property for investment purposes. So so the reason was to just educate clients on that really um, for myself as well, from a personal point of view. Um, and we could get local ex or, or kind of experts from anywhere on the subject. Um, so a, a mixture of reasons. Um, also, another reason why we did it was because we'd get asked uh, a lot of questions again and again. And so it was just to cover off all them topics uh, on the podcast. So then the clients would normally listen to the podcast first. And then once they've come to you, you've actually answered a lot of the questions that they were going to ask anyway. And they already did know about you. Um, and they kind of, you know, that sort of know, like, and trust you before they kind of buy from you. That definitely works with podcasting. So the more they can listen to you and get to know you and ultimately get to hopefully like you as a person, and then they'll then come to you to use your service. Is. So everything all together combined for the podcast has been really powerful. Um, and then also the, the marketing tool in itself, you know, the amount of listeners that you have, but also the promotional uh, aspect of you actually doing the podcast, like you said, kind of becoming that local expert. Um, so, you know, a lot of people will listen to the podcast that I do, but a lot of people maybe don't listen to the podcast. But the fact that they know that I do a podcast on property, in effect, kind of be makes you that sort of expert, as it were. So, yeah. so there's a lot of definite benefits of doing podcasting. Yeah, no, I think I, you, I totally agree with everything you've said there. And funnily enough, the, the next bit I was going to talk about was the benefits of doing podcasting, um, you know, over and above any other type of content marketing like video and so on and so forth. Um, I think for me, one of the first benefits of, of podcasting is that um, it's, a, it's a very personal um, communicative tool. So, you know, you are talking directly to the person that, that is listening. Most people will listen to this, you know, on their own, essentially, in a car or on the train, headphones on, whatever it is, out for a run, out for a walk. Something. So you're, you're, it's a very personal way of, of talking to people. Um, but along with that, it's a very convenient method of getting a message across because you, you require minimal concentration, really, to listen to a podcast. Um, certainly much less than it is to concentrate on a, on a video, whether that's an explainer video or a how-to or, or even just two people sat in a room chatting. Um, you know, the, so, so you can listen to a podcast, certainly, while you're carrying out any other tasks, whether that's driving or cutting the grass or, or whatever it might be. Um, a subscription is another thing that, that is a good benefit to, to podcasting. So whilst people can subscribe to your YouTube channel and things like that, um, they then have to go and find that. So they have to click on your channel and, and find the, the, the films that they, and so on. Whereas with podcasts, the way people listen to podcasts is generally through a podcasting app, which if they subscribe to your podcast, every time you release a new episode, it lands in their back pocket because it comes into their phone through their podcasting app and it's there for them to listen to anytime they want. Um, so that's a much more convenient way than going to, to get a notification from YouTube or something like that and then having to go and, and find that video and go and watch it. Um, it can be very formal or informal, depending on what you want to do. Um, it, again, because it's quite a personal thing, it can be an informal type of um, chat, uh, an interview with someone, um, or it could be a very formal training type 
um, you know, information giving uh, product. There are companies who will use podcasting internally for onboarding and training and so on, so that they don't necessarily have to have people sitting, um, you know, watching onboarding videos or or, or sitting in a, a lecture theatre with a manager having to to chant everything at them. Um, <clears throat> but it, it can also be a launch pad for for multiple types of content. Um, what I do for clients um, is when they've recorded a podcast, we can also offer the ability to turn that into a short video for them, um, just using some images and so on and so forth that run alongside the the, the podcast. Um, so that can then be implemented and, and put into things like LinkedIn natively, because you can't add an audio file to something like LinkedIn, but you can audio, add a video file quite easily. Um, so you're not taking them off the site and so on, um, and it's much easier to do that. We can also make blog, blog posts from your uh, podcast. So it's it's quite easy for us to get that transcribed for you. And with a little bit of tweaking, that can become a blog post. So th and that helps with your SEO and so on and so forth. Um, so, so just from recording your podcast, you can quickly create three different types of content um, that can be reused and reused and, and help you spread that message in, in whatever way you, you want. Um, I think Kev mentioned this at first, and, and, and I dare say you probably find this as well, Kesa, is that um, podcasting in particular helps to build that rapport and that trust with people because of the way you tend to use it, because of the way that you're talking about um, how you do things or, or the, the interest that you have in that part of your business or you have a guest on that's a particular expert and things, people start to, to engage and, and learn from that a little bit. And, and by the time they decide to come and speak to you, they're already trusting what you've said because they've heard you, you, you think. Do you find that sort of thing as well, Kesa? Is that a, a sort of, I mean, what kind of the main benefits from you doing your podcast have you found? Absolutely, uh, care. So yeah, that's probably the biggest benefit that I've found from doing the podcast is that before that, you know, if I was going to speak to a client, you know, I'd ultimately kind of have to let them know my backstory and everything like that. But with the podcasting, then they already know everything about me. And, the, you know, there already is that level of trust. And uh, then it's just a matter of just kind of going on to the actual product that you're kind of helping them with. So definitely that's been a huge benefit for them. Yeah. Yeah, um, I I would agree, and and um, I think um, for for the, for the most part, that's that. I suppose I've said it already in, in a few different ways, but that's that's what I think podcasting has the most power for is um, is being able to build that rapport and engage with people, um, and and they already feel they know you before they approach your business for for whatever it is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, right, so I'm going to move on to um, the the hows of podcasting. Um, so of course, you know we've covered what what it is and why you'd want to do it. So it it might be that at a very basic level, um, you already have all the tools that you need to podcast. So the the, the mobile phone in your pocket, um, simply find a recorder app talk into it, give it the whole, you know, hi, this is the Sausages podcast. Today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite types of sausages. Um, uh, you know, and then we're going to have such and such a butcher on and, and so on and so forth. Um, and upload it to a podcasting app and it will distribute everywhere for you. And that's it. That's that, that could be as simple as it is. It's my belief, however, that a podcast really, like any type of marketing material, needs to reflect you as a business and and um, you as a person so that might not be quite the same quality that you're going for and um, you might need to plan out your content a little bit more um it's it's um you know quality and what content you have and the information that you want to get across all these things are worth talking about and, and thinking about before you get stuck into it um so when people approach me to produce a podcast for them and things, I tend to do um, a, sorry, I tend to provide them with um, a, a resources sheet. Um, and it will ask questions like, um, you know, what do you want to get out of the podcast? And that might be as simple as, I just want to tell people about what I do. Um, or it could be, I really want to start a conversation with people about this. Or it, it could be that I want to have a series that trains people on how to do this. Um, 
you know, who's your audience? It's really important to think about who your audience is and, and how you're going to communicate best with them. Um, you know, in terms of technical levels and all sorts, you know, if I if I sat here and gave you loads of code names and numbers for things, uh, you know, and said, right, go off and make a podcast, it's not necessarily going to work for, for everyone. Um, how often do you want to um, do your podcast? How many episodes are you going to do? Are you going to run it as a series? Um, you know, I see a... Kev has put in there, where do I, where do we stand on the continuous show versus series stroke box set approach? Um, and I think what he means by that is, you know, is it an episodic thing that you release every week or do you record six episodes and then put them all out at once? Um, I, my answer to that is a little bit vague because I would say um, it very much depends on the message for that podcast. Um, so if it is a um, a conversation point that you want to start um, engaging with people and getting feedback with. You want to do that as an episodic thing where you might do it every week, you might do it every fortnight or every month. If it's possibly an information podcast where you want to tell people all about your business and how you do it, um, then you might want to record half a dozen episodes of that and put them all out at once or put them out a day at a time, put them out every day that week. Um, something like that, so that people can get more of it instantly. They can always get more. They can always come on and go, I can't wait for the next episode. That's coming out tomorrow. Great. I'm going to learn how to do X, Y, and Z by the end of this week by listening to this podcast. Um, so, Kessa, I, I see somebody else has asked you um, about what your podcast is called and things as well. And I was going to ask you about how you know how often you put your podcast out and um, and so on and so forth, what your format is. Yeah, Kerr. So yeah, as Gra Graham's asked me the question, so I've put a link down to my podcast. It's called the Freedom Property Podcast um, in the chat box there. Um, so in, in regards to uh, how often we do the podcast, it was usually every two weeks, uh, but we actually stopped in, uh, during the lockdown and we've actually moved to um, doing Zoom calls, um, so Zoom webinars over the, sort of the lockdown period, but hopefully kind of looking to start that back up again. Um, but yeah, you know, like, like what you said, you need to kind of think about how often you're going to do your podcast and ideally try to stick to that time frame um, and maybe don't go for too many, you know, uh, like, you know, it's going to be w once every week or once every two weeks. It's quite a big commitment to put on yourself because we was doing it every two weeks and it was always kind of like you know uh, recording one and then you was rushing to kind of then start on the next one it was just it was a constant sort of carousel so i think definitely kind of considering how often you're going to do them is key but at the same time having that consistency of bringing them out so if you can maybe yeah, record a few at a time and then you know kind of um you know send them out you know, yeah yeah exactly that kind of really helps things to, definitely i think yeah. yeah, and um, I'm sure this question will come up, but um, I was going to bring it up anyway. In terms of length of time of podcast, uh, uh, you, most of your podcasts are, are sort of interview type podcasts, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so all all mine uh, bar the first few where I did was um, more just about me uh, were interview podcasts. So um, always tried to do them. Uh, uh, always tried to have them under an hour. Um, ideally about sort of 45 minutes because people really kind of tune off after that you know depending on the topic obviously some people would talk more than others so you know some of them you know were an hour and a half and we had to really cut them back um, while yeah. some were kind of shot around the half an hour point so I, ideally for me um, 45 minutes is more than enough you know I, I would say the same <clears throat> my podcast um, is about people's journeys and, and business journeys and so on and um, so it's very much an interview based thing as well Right now, I'm putting it out weekly, um, simply because I'm I'm managing to do that during lockdown. Um, but it was fortnightly as well, and it's running to about 35, 40, 45 minutes too. And I, I think I would agree if you're interviewing someone and you have a good conversation going, then 40 to 45 minutes is is a good time for that. Um, I, however, I would say if anybody is considering making a podcast that is either um, a teaching podcast or just an information podcast talking about your business and what you do and it's just a, a single person um, somewhere around the 10 to 12 minutes I would say is probably a good time because people will take that in short bursts and pay real attention to it um, and if that means you split up your, your podcast into more episodes and, and release it over days and days then that's absolutely fine um, but I think uh, I think we're probably both on the same lines there, Kessa, if we're talking about interviews can be that little bit longer and, and, yeah. and can be a bit more 
entertaining almost uh, because you've got two people to listen to and you've got a bit of back and forth. Um, I'm seeing a couple more questions there. What's the benefit of a podcast versus a webinar? Um, well, two things for me, certainly. Um, a podcast is easier to produce than a webinar because you don't have to worry about any of the video side of things at all. Um, and it's much easier to uh, run through a podcast and make lots of mistakes and then edit that out and put it all together as a nice sounding podcast. Much easier to do that than it is on video. So if you're not already into making a lot of videos, I think that's your first benefit. Um, and your second benefit, I would say, is, is much the same as, as I've already mentioned about how um, easy it is to, to get into a, a podcast um, and to, to sort of send that out to your listeners, is that um, people can listen to that whilst doing other things. So they're engaging with it, but they're able to do it at a time when um, they you know, otherwise wouldn't be able to sit and watch a video. So it might be on their commute in and out of work. Um, if, if anybody's actually going to work instead of working from home, <laughs> it might be whilst going out for a walk. It might be during leisure time rather than being um, a work thing that they necessarily have to sit down and concentrate on. Um, so I, for me, it comes back to that that video versus um, versus listening. But Kessa, did you consider doing video stuff um, when you looked at doing a podcast, or was it always the podcast that you were going for? Yeah, so we did uh, we we do record the podcast as well as much as we can. Uh, mm. But the difficulty of that is kind of how long the video is. So you know, sometimes the video will be over an hour long, and then the amount of um, effort that it takes to edit that. Also, the size of the video as well, you know, it's quite kind of tough to manage all that compared to an audio file, which is a lot smaller. I mean, that's kind of definitely one benefit of podcasts is that um, although you've got kind of, um, you know, you might need to do a little bit of editing, but, mm. you know, it's a lot smaller file, a lot easier to manage, you know, on a laptop or that sort of thing. Whilst with video editing, you know, you really need a kind of really strong laptop, desktop type PC to be able to do that. And then how are you going to upload that? You know, you're going to upload it to YouTube, that sort of stuff and trying to do that. You know, we, you know, we did it a few times and actually kind of lost the file as it was uploading and then had to do it again and again and, you know, uploading it all night. So definitely some benefits of uh, audio over video from that point of view. Uh, but th there are some benefits of doing all, uh, video as well because then you can have short snippets that you can put out as videos, um, you know, like, so if, if the person sure. that you're interviewing has a good answer, you could kind of put out like a minute video on that, you know, and then have kind of snippets here and there and then kind of release them over time as short mini video, video series as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. back to kind of Lana's question about the benefits of podcasts versus webinars. So, you know, we've been doing webinars ourselves over the last couple of months from the, you know, since the start of the lockdown. Um, I really like webinars. Um, so we do ours on Zoom, um, like the kind of interaction side of things, um, which has been really good. But definitely, as Keir says, is that, you know, it's definitely a lot more easier to listen to a podcast whilst you're out on the go. Um, on the webinars, we would get kind of between 50 and 100 people joining on, which is fantastic. Um, but, you know, on podcasts, you know, we might have kind of upwards of a thousand people listening to that. So um, over the long term, you know, a lot more people will listen to your podcast more likely than they will a webinar where they actually have to kind of sit down like they are tonight, you know, to listen to it. Um, so I think that's kind of a couple of benefits of doing podcasts over a webinar. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. And and don't forget, Lorna, that um, I'll, I'll go on to it in a bit more detail later, but um, I, I mentioned that you can turn your podcast into a video quite easily. So you might want to start with the podcast and then you can turn that into a video version just with some slides or even some animation or something that becomes a, a, a webinar that you can either personally introduce or, or, or do whatever. So there's, there's, there's endless possibilities there for it. Um, I see Alison has asked in the chat box about does the editing take technical skill um, and how long does it take um, and so on. So I'm... I was just about to start talking about recording and editing and things, so I'll address that as, as we go on. Um, and the same, Lon, I see you've just asked about what podcast apps do we recommend. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll do that as well um, just uh, shortly. So we've decided on what our podcast is going to be. Um, we've decided on how long it's going to be, how many guests we're going to have, how many episodes, uh, what we're going to talk about, who our audience is. All these things have been jotted down and, and decided that that's what we're going to do. And now it comes to the recording part of it, which doesn't have to be as as, as sort of technically frightening um, as, as people might imagine. Um, I do always recommend that people get a USB microphone, whether you're recording it on your laptop or an iPad or whatever it is, 
Um, there's an endless choice uh, of, of USB microphones to use, but they will sound, even the cheap ones will sound infinitely better than the built-in mic to your laptop um, or the, the, the iPad. And one of the reasons for that is because the, the um, USB microphones, you can get a lot closer. Um, so I read about six inches from the microphone. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, and also your USB mics are built differently, which means that they don't pick up quite as much room noise and background noise. So your podcast, remember, people are, might be listening to it in their headphones, and if you're talking to them in their headphones, sound like somewhere, it can be quite distracting to the message that as as small a sound as you can um my my personal um, uh, yeah sorry sorry to interrupt um i don't know if it was perhaps just me whether it was happening with everybody else but you kept on (laughs) pausing and speaking really quickly would you mind just going back 30 40 seconds and just repeating what you've just said i think there was some really really good content there that people have missed (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right i'll i'll try and say it slower and not pause no um yeah sorry i don't know if that was me or not um what i was saying was about um recommending that everybody uses um a usb microphone if that's what's appropriate whether that be for your ipad or your laptop or whatever um the benefits of having a microphone that you'll use is that it won't pick up as much background noise it's far more forgiving, um, and it, it's it's um, much a much more direct sound. So you won't sound like you're um, in a big room when you, someone is listening to your podcast, maybe on their headphones, for example. It can be very distracting if you sound like you're in the background somewhere. You should be di- sort of directly in in the ears, kind of thing. Um, so yes, but uh, you, th- that was essentially the point I was trying to make, probably over about two minutes of leathering. Um, so my personal preference for some of the lower budget um, USB microphones, I, the first one I would recommend really is about £70. Um, it's a Samson uh, Q2U, but it comes with um, you know a little stand and the cables and all the rest of it. And it's a microphone that looks not dissimilar to this. Um, and... What it's the what it is it, it's called a dynamic microphone, which means it doesn't pick up all the background noise and so on and so forth. So um, something like that, I, I really do uh, recommend that you invest a little bit into a microphone. You can buy um, you know e- easily twenty pound cheap microphones off Amazon and so on, but I, I think it's a really a bit of a false economy. Um, I always go back to the adage about um, what you're transmitting and broadcasting. You want to represent you, and if it sounds pretty awful. That's not how you want to be represented. Um, so yeah, that's that's my first um, tip: is definitely get yourself a microphone. The next thing for recording is to think about the room that you're recording in. Um, so soft furnishings are your um, hard flat walls are not so much. Um, any hard surfaces really, if you can get the least close uh, hard surfaces you can. Um, if you can't get as, as close to the microphone as you can, but only within about six inches, um, if you're too close to a microphone, you get a very boomy sound and it's very artificial. Um, if you struggle to get a room like um, I, I quite, this is going to sound odd, but I quite like bedrooms. Um, but I quite like bedrooms for recording in. If I didn't have this room, which is acoustically treated with the, the panels at the back. Because a bedroom has um, lots of soft furnishings in it that, that cover uh, a lot, and they don't have a lot of blank wall space usually. Um, so certainly something like that. Um, if you can't get a, a room that is particularly good sounding, try like a clothes rail with a duvet hanging over it just behind you, um, which just sounds a little bit odd, but what it's doing is it's stopping all the noise that bounces forward and backward from entering the microphone again. So again, it stops the sound of you're obviously sitting in you know, your kitchen or your bathroom or your living room or whatever. Um, so yeah, some little uh, tips that, that you can use there. Um, right now, I'm doing my podcast um, over the internet 
uh, because obviously I can't interview people in person. Um, if you're looking to do a podcast that um, is a you know all interview based like mine, I would recommend, and I'm, I'm so I should have said I'm going to put some links up at the end. <clears throat> and we can get them sent out and things as well. But I recommend um, a, a website called Zencaster, uh, which allows you to record yourself and record the guest um, at each other's computer. And then it uploads the files and, and sends them to you and so on. So you're, what you're not getting is the sound of that person over the internet. So there's no chance of what happened to me earlier where I suddenly paused and then everything sped up and so on. Um, it's You will get um, the recording of what that person sounded like in their, in their room. Um, and uh, Kev, oh, oh no, Kev, Kev was actually in the room because that was before lockdown. But Alison certainly I, I recorded... Um, over Zencaster, and and that uh, episode came out today. Um, plug, plug. Um, so, uh, and and I think if anybody listens to that, I think you'll agree it doesn't really sound that much like we're at the other end of of um, of an internet cable somewhere. Um, so yes, uh, you know, it is possible to do remote recording in good quality, is what I'm saying at the moment. Um, editing wise, so um, Alison had asked about the editing and things, and does it take technical skill and so on. I'd be kidding myself and I'd be putting myself out of business if I said, yeah, anybody could do it. It's 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 super simple. Um, but you can do it yourself if you'd like to. If you have the time um, and the knowledge to put into it, then by all means, you can do it. Um, and uh, I'll maybe get Kessa to tell us what he does about editing and, and, and so on and so forth as well. But there are free apps out there. Um, that will allow you to uh, take your podcast um, and imagine it as a as a, as a line of of lots of re wave recordings and chop bits out of it and plus glue bits together and so on until you get a nice sounding recording. Get rid of all your ums and ahs or your mistakes or whatever bits that you want to say or if you have to edit bits out because it's too long and so. Um, then yes, it, it, it's possible to do that with a little bit of um, knowledge and skill, but. It, it's no, the basics of it is no different to learning how to use Excel or, you know, your, your mobile phone or something like that. Um, I tend to approach things slightly differently and I will approach them in a very broadcast quality sense. So the um, software that I use and the, the tools that I use to get rid of um, pop noises and too many breaths and and um, and so on and so forth. Um, that is very technical, and I would be doing myself out of a job if I said anybody could do it. Um, so so I won't. Um, but yes, I, again, I think it depends on um, that a uh, quality over um, you know convenience. So if you're not particularly worried about some of the sounds and, and so on that come through on your, your podcast recording, then great, you can do it yourself. If you truly want it to represent um, the, the best quality, then yeah, it takes a, a fair bit of, of skill and so on to do that. Um, so, um, Kessar, what do you do once you've recorded your episodes um, to, to you know, sort of get them ready for, for broadcast and things? Do you edit them much? Um, yeah, we do. So, um, I mean, so um, when once we've recorded the podcast, um, kind of through learning as well, I've, I've kind of learned how to kind of limit the amount of editing that I need to do uh, by the way that I kind of present the podcast, really. Um, but actually, we don't actually do a lot of uh, editing. The only time we really need to edit is the beginning bit, you know, if there's any kind of uh, pauses, that sort of stuff, and at the end. Mm -hmm. And if um, the person that I'm interviewing maybe wants to re-answer the question. But besides that, actually, we don't really edit it much now so we normally listen through it all just to see if there was any drops or anything like that or any kind of um, you know volume adjustments that we need to make where people have moved away from the microphone and back that sort of stuff that so we need to adjust the yeah. volume but actually itself we don't spend a lot of time editing right at the beginning we did uh, but now actually it goes out pretty much unedited almost yeah I, I think um, that's probably quite a natural thing is that, that in your first few episodes, um, if you're recording a podcast, they'll certainly not be as good as your second few because you will you will learn uh, your own format and your best way to um, to talk about something or to introduce a guest. And so there won't be so many pauses. There won't be yeah. so many 
um, you know, sort of ums and ahs, or um, you'll remember to to take a drink, or you know, to not clear your throat or something. Um, so yeah, it, I think as you go into your journey of podcasting, it can be difficult at the start, and you'll feel like there's a lot of editing to do. But um, as you say, Kessler, I think as you go on the better your technique is for recording, um, the less you need to edit. Um, and I, I think that's that's true for most, you know, most sort of recording things. Um, yeah. Just, um, just wanted to add, add care, sorry, as well, on your yeah. first point you said about uh, the microphone. So I completely agree with that. You know, having a good microphone is key. Um, so I, I don't know if you can see it on my ear. I use kind of a similar one like you've got there yeah. as well. Um, I think the key thing is that people can put up with like poor video quality, um, other things that might not be so good. Um, but audio uh, really has to be key. Um, you know, it has to be really good quality, to be honest. And I found myself listening to other podcasts or other people, you know, when, even when you watch YouTube videos and stuff like that, if the audio quality is poor, everybody puts in the comments that um, couldn't watch it because audio quality was poor or even like um, on Facebook or social media, that sort of thing. So definitely having a good microphone is key. Yeah, but that and that's a really valid point actually about uh, video um, as well. You can get away with slightly less quality video and it, and the message can still come across but but if if all you're doing is is um you know saying that message to someone if they can't make it out properly or if it's distracted by noise and so on and so forth then yeah you're right you're just you're not going to land that message properly um great thank you um so th there are other things to consider when you're recording the podcast as well, which we'll, we'll not dive into su such great detail, but you might want to do uh, an introduction and an outro. Uh, in my podcast, I have the same intro and outro that's on every episode, <clears throat> and then I change the content in the middle. Um, that might not suit the format of, of podcast that you want. You might just want to, to start off every every time with um, with a different message. Uh, you might want to consider music. Um, not everybody has to have music on their podcast, but you might want a little bit to introduce things or a little bit at the end. Um, so there are there are different things to consider in there. Um, but before you then go off to publish your your episodes. Um, the, the last key thing that, that I always talk to people about is the show notes. Now, show notes are like um, the album sleeve cover, if you like. So show notes are where you take the opportunity to tell people a little bit about the episode. You might put links in there to things that you've discussed on the episode. You might put the guest's contact details in there. You put your contact details in there, a call to action, something like that. Um, that will accompany the podcast wherever it goes. So you might publish it on 20 different podcast apps um, and on every single one, it will have these show notes so that people can refer to it to a little bit more. Or if people are finding your podcasts for the first time and you've got half a dozen episodes out there, they can run through the show notes and get a little brief description of them so they know which episodes they might want to start off with. Um, so that, that can be quite an important point is to make sure your show notes are, are good um, in terms of giving information. And it's also your extra opportunity to put, as I say, things like links into to things that you've talked about. Um, but then you're, you're kind of ready for, for publishing it. So, Kessa, what do you do about publishing your podcast? Yeah, so I, I use um, Podbean to publish my um, podcast. I don't know if that's necessarily the best. I mean, we did do a bit of research when we first started mm -hmm. doing the, the podcasting and that's, that's the one that we decided to use. But after actually speaking to you, I think there is actually kind of better platforms that you can use. Um, but but that, that did give us a good spread of like all the different, because yeah. I mean, you know, you've got kind of iTunes, Spotify, and then you've got all the different, there's millions of different platforms out there, isn't there? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you have a better idea of what's the best a potential platform well, to put it on. Podbean is, is up there on my list as well. Okay, um, and good. Lorna, this comes to, to the question that you asked about what podcast apps do you recommend? So there are three that I recommend looking at for publishing. <clears throat> and Podbean is one of them. Um, Acast is another one. Um, and Anchor is the third one. And what all of those platforms will do for you in certain degrees um, some more than others, is they will then distribute that podcast for you to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, um, if you're lucky, because essentially Google's supposed to be US only. Um, <clears throat> a, they will publish it to Spotify, um, to dozens of other smaller podcast apps that people use, like Stitcher or um, 
Uh, there's a, a podcast radio one and so on and so forth. But the publishing doesn't have to be um, you physically publishing to 20 different places at once. Um, so if, if you get it right with the publisher that you use, and, and, and most of these are free, by the way, um, then it will then distribute that for you to the different formats that you want. Um, so obviously the key ones are things like Apple and Spotify. Um, Apple can be a little bit tricky, um, but it, you know, you, you'll get there in the end with it. They can just sometimes take a little while to list your podcast for you. Um, so yeah, that, that, will, that will get you wherever you want. So as I say, with the show notes and coming to publish it, you put your show notes into Podbean or, or, or Acast or whatever it is you want. And then everywhere that that distributes your podcast to, um, then it will, it will also hold all of those show notes and so on. Um, I see Graham's just asking a question there about, is it true that Anchor holds your IP rights once you upload to them? Um, so it's no longer yours. As far as I'm aware, no, that, that's not true. Um, I, I do know that it can sometimes be difficult to get your podcast back from Anchor. As in, if you were using Anchor to distribute your podcast and then you wanted to change to Podbean or Acast or something, essentially you're sending a message to Anchor to say, okay, can you my podcast and here's the transfer number to send it to to this place and i know they can take a long time and be a little bit sticky about doing that but as far as i'm aware they, there's no transfer of ip um going on there you know you still own the rights to your own podcast um but that's interesting i i will check that out further because i have used anchor before so i would be irritated if if, if they now somehow own some of my ip but it, it, it's not something that, that i've seen i have to say graham um, so we've planned out our podcast, we've recorded some episodes, we've decided that we wanted to do six 10 minute episodes and it was all about this particular aspect. We've had a couple of guests and we've done the show notes, we've published it and it's all out there. What's, what's next for it? Um, well, obviously, as with any sort of marketing campaign, you need to kind of promote that you've put that content out there. Um, so you might want to to put a little trailer together, you know, which, you know, depending on how you go on with your editing and things, you might take a few snippets from a couple of guests and put that as a little um, video to put out onto LinkedIn or something like that. Or you maybe just do a post to say, you know, it's now available on here, here and here and here. Um, but this is where the 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 extra content um, comes into play. And I don't know if you do any of this, Kessar, about creating a video from your podcast or getting it transcribed and turning it into a blog do you do any of that um i do the video but not not transcribing it into a blog currently but yeah. definitely that's on my list of things that i want to do um because then yeah, okay. i've got all that content already that i can now put into written content so well exactly that. yeah that's that's and and uh, you know for anybody that, that has anything to do with marketing i think reusable content is is an absolute godsend um, so I, I use two different apps um, to do that specifically, um, although others are available. So I use um, a, a site called Headliner to make videos of podcasts. It works particularly well if your podcast is up to 10 minutes long, but it can do longer ones if you like. But it's very, very good for, for just um, slotting in some images or some short video, some stock footage, something like that. And you can arrange it on the timeline along with your podcast, and then it will turn it into whatever format of video you like, whether that's a square or a wide screen, depending on where you're putting it. And hey, presto, you've suddenly got video versions of, of all your podcasts. Um, you can get up to 10 videos done a month free of charge. If you go over that, then they put a little, um, what's the word for it, um, watermark on your video um, to say, or you can pay for a, a, a pro setting or, or whatever it is. Um, so I use Headliner to do that and to get uh, everything transcribed and put into a blog post, slightly more manual. I do upload it to rev.com um, who are very good at, at transcribing and I think are a pretty decent bang for the buck as well. It's something like $1.25 for two minutes worth. Um, so it's not an awful lot of money to get a 10 minute podcast transcribed for you. And then there's just a bit of manual tweaking yourself to turn that into whether it's third person you want to talk about it in or whatever in, in a blog post. Um, and hey, presto, you've got three bits of content 
which feed different markets. So you've got your podcast that people can subscribe to. You've got your video that you can post all over socials and you know that everyone will get that. And you have your blog post that can be on your website and is busy feeding uh, Google all the search engine optimization information that you could possibly want. Um, so starting with podcasting, I, I think you've you've got um, a really good goal there for you know creating more than just something people might listen to. Um, so yes, uh, let me just share my screen uh, with some links to some of these. Um, yeah, so if you'd like my podcast planner, um, that's my website, audioutsource.co.uk. You can go straight to the podcast planner. You will need to put in your email address, I'm afraid. To, to Sorry, Ken, we can't see that uh, screen yet. Oh, okay, hold on. Is that better? There you go. Hey, okay. I'll, I'll start saying all that all over again then. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, if you'd like to go and get my podcast planner, which will help you go through some of the questions that I would get you to, to ask before you make a podcast, you can get straight to it with the, the podcast planner link there. You will need to put your email address in, I'm afraid. However, I just haven't got the time to be spamming people with, with you know, hey, how are you doing with your podcast? You know, uh, so do not worry about that, please. Um, anybody wants to try some remote recording with guests, uh, zencaster.com there's a couple of links there for editing programs audacity is is one of the programs so that's a audacity team and reaper is my preferred weapon of choice um, it's far more complex in terms of what it can do but it's um, it's very simple to get into video creation headliner app transcription rev.com they're my recommendations to you um, and they're what i use for clients if they come to me and say i want you to produce you know, these podcasts, and I also need them turned into videos and I need them turned into to transcripts as well. Um, so I, that's what I would use. So um, let's have a quick look at the question again, see if anything's come up. Is there software for transcribing audio into text, asks Anna. Um, I think there is software you could purchase to actually do it natively on your, your computer. Um, but I, I would recommend going to something like rev.com um, or finding people. I found quite a few people on LinkedIn that actually do it themselves um, and tend to be very good and very quick. Um, and Kessa, the next one's for you. Yeah, so I see that one from Jeremy. That's a great question. So um, to what degree does your podcast lead to new client or is it mainly regarded as an informative service to cement your current client base? So uh, what, what I would say is, I mean, it's, it's definitely a slow burn. You know, you, if you do one podcast, you know, you're not going to get 100 phone calls after that. You know, it definitely is something that you need to kind of consistently keep doing. Um, but after a while, once you do start to build the following, definitely once the people start to know, like, and trust you, then definitely, you know, you will uh, or, you know, it, it definitely was. Uh, my view to get new clients from that um, but at the same time like you said you know also sort of cement my current clients as well so I think a mixture of the two but definitely kind of the more you do it and the longer you've been doing it for um, the clients will come to you because they'll want you to kind of give them the education that they um, you know so that you have uh, they know that you have the knowledge and maybe even want to know how to do it themselves like like with you today care you know we're, we're all learning how to do podcasting it all sounds great but most people won't we'll have the time to kind of do all that themselves and actually then they'll refer to you um, after that. So it is a slow burn, but definitely you will see clients come out of it, I think. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And I would agree. I, I, I would dispel any myth about, you know, um, do a podcast and they will come running to you. It's not quite how it works. It's like any um, marketing campaign, if you like. Um, you, you, you will need to work for the payoff um, but it is a whole new ball game of um, you know approaching people and letting them get to know you, so that they are you know far more um, willing to come and, and and do business with you. Um, yeah, yep. Um, I see Kev saying about um, certain account types in Zoom can do an auto transcription. Um, I think you're absolutely right there, Kev. Um, I think I might be right in saying that um, if you were to turn it into a video yourself. When you put it onto YouTube, you can get it to do transcription as well. But That's how easy it is to get that transcription then off the video as text, I'm I'm not awfully sure. Um, but uh, it, you know, it's it's not a way I've I've ever done it because it's it's far simpler for me to get the thing transcribed and turned into a, a blog. You know? 
Um, but that's that is pretty much it for me. I think we've gone on the, the whole journey from you know what it is and what you can expect it to do right through to um, how you go about making it and then how you go about publishing it. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a whistle stop tour, but um, at, at the risk of making a blatant advert for myself, um, feel free to pop onto the website audioutsource.co.uk. I have a, a link on there, a Calendly link, where you can book thirty minutes call zoom skype whatever it is um with me absolutely free of charge uh, you just just jump on and and put a time in there and i'm quite happy to chat away with anybody about any audio things um you know whether that's you, you you're already doing a podcast and you want some advice or whether you want to think about doing it to start um, yeah, that's great, Ken. I think what I'd like to add to that as well is that, um, you know, although that you can help them with that side of thing, I think a lot of people maybe be worried about even just starting a podcast in itself, being a bit self-conscious of putting themselves out there. And, mm -hmm. you know, will they have good content to put out? But I think a lot of people would be surprised how much knowledge they have in their own industry. And, you know, if it's going to be an interview based one, there'll be a lot of other people that'll be willing to go on their podcast. And the key thing is that, you know, most people are pretty good in their own businesses. And once once you start putting yourself out there, you get more and more comfortable with doing that. And ultimately, people will only know about what you do um, if you kind of let them know. So when podcasts is a great tool of doing that. So I was very hesitant to put myself out there at first, but you know, where once you start doing it a few times, um, it, it really becomes quite easy. I don't really listen back to myself. I don't like doing that, but I definitely kind of put myself <laughs> out there as key. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I see there's Alison asking, whose podcasts do you listen to? Um, do you listen to, to an awful lot of them yourself, Kessa? Or, um, or yeah, Kerr, I do. I, I love podcasts. So I, I do listen to a lot of property podcasts. So, you know, maybe it might not be relevant for yourselves, but um, there's one called The Property Podcast. Uh, that's fantastic for property. And that's what really got me into podcasting. Um, I do like kind of Joe Rogan stuff. I, I, a mixture of stuff. I mean, I kind of chop and change. I'll listen to people for, you know, a couple of months and then I'll, you know, mainly business ones, personal development and um, property related stuff is what I listen to. How about yourself? Yeah. I I'm I suppose I'm a little bit niche with my uh, podcast tastes as well in the, that most of them are connected with my industry somehow. So they they're um, they're all about particular sound designs or um, you know how particular things in movies are done and so on and so forth. Um, but there's there's one that I like which which anybody who has any interest in how things sound at all would quite enjoy. Um, it's called Twenty Thousand Hertz. And they explore everything from, you know, um, why the ping sound on Messenger when you get a message sounds the way it does and and, and who made that and, and how they do it and why the Xbox sounds like that when it starts up. Everything from that to, you know, how sound is affecting us in the world and, and right now how different things are sounding and so on. So, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really good form. If you've got any interest in sound whatsoever, um, it's quite a, an, an open market on that one. Right. Um, I think that's everything from me, Sarah and Alison. Um, Kerr, Kate, can you do me a favour and unshare your screen just so that we can see you again? Oh, that's awfully nice of you. <laughs> and then <laughs> I'll just see, you know, for the, the last few while, if anybody wants to jump in, if anybody's got any questions they want to dive in on. And we've had loads of questions in the in the chat, so that's been fab. No, no hands up. No, nobody's waving. Not that I can see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kev, it's not quite time to finish. Um, but you know, we were just saying, weren't we, the other day? Why do we now all wave when we're finishing a webinar? It's quite strange. <laughs> um, I'm just going to finish. Um, well, I'm going to finish by thanking everybody, of course. But I'm all, you know, there's always a tip, isn't there, at the end of it? And my tip to care is you need to work on your poker face because the emotions that flew over your face when Kev started talking about the choir boy story was absolutely priceless. <laughs> I think every emotion, I was sitting there watching it and you were going, oh, what is he going to say? <laughs> do, do, do you know what? I knew it was coming as well and I, I had tried to prepare myself so well. but <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, it's been really, really great. Super interesting. Um and, and I hope we've inspired a whole bunch of you to go off and, and kind of um, take up the challenge. So, um, and like everything, you know, we say this about the Chamber all the time. Remember, we're here to share your news. So 
if your news is that you've launched a podcast and you want us to ping the link out so that um, everybody knows it's there, then please, please, please tell us about it or any news that you've got. Um, we were, I guess, slightly worried, in, um, especially going into April, as, the, as we were all like stopping doing things, that there would be no news, that people wouldn't have anything to find to share. And it's been the opposite. Our news and our um, website has just been super busy. And, and I'm really pleased about that because this is the time when you need to be telling everybody that you're out there and you're open for business and you're transitioning what you do or you're bringing in new people or you're changing your product or whatever it is. So when, you're, when your podcast launches, please come back and tell us so we can write about that and publicise that on social media. So uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Um, we knew we wouldn't finish quite bang on the hour. So uh, yeah, we told you that at the start. <laughs> But thank Hello. you so much for being with us. Yeah, give us a wave and we'll see you another time. <laughs> Thanks, folks. Enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.